everybody. So today we're going to finish our salt dough birds. We're going to paint them. We'll show you some little hints on how to paint your bird. Then we're gonna show you how to thread the bird so that you can have it hang and it has dangly feet. And finally, if you have leftover salt dough or if you wanna make more and do this later, we're gonna show you how to make a salt dough rose and how to paint it with a different type of media versus um, acrylic paints, which is what we're gonna use on the bird. So let's get started. Okay, so my lovely assistant is going to help me again today. And we've, she's got it pretty well painted. She's going to show you some simple little techniques that you can do um, with the paintbrush and um, explain how she painted it. That was the easiest way she found to paint it. So what we're using is acrylic paint. Uh, this one is an artist acrylic paint. It's a little bit more expensive. You don't have to use this kind. Any acrylic paint will do. If you have craft paint, just, you know, whatever you happen to have around the house or your mom might have around the house. So go ahead and show them what you're doing with your bird. Okay, so basically I'm going to add more detail into the wings because it gives a definition, you can see the feathers more. So how we're gonna do this is I just have a biggish, mediumish brush and I'm gonna take the darkest color blue, which I'm probably gonna need more of, and I'm gonna kind of just put it into these little divots, which I do need You need some more dark blue. Um, I would just use straight dark blue, I don't mix it with any white. Yeah. And then also, um, she found that it was a lot easier to paint the body of your bird first, let it dry, paint the back of your bird, let it dry, and then paint the beak, the eyes, and then finally the wing. Um, and of course, you don't forget the feet, but the feet are their own little thing, yeah. so they can be painted, whatever. This is because it's easy, because you can go up and make sure the whole bird gets covered. Well, so. And if you happen to accidentally get a little bit of paint, the wrong color onto another section, like if she got some wing color onto the body, if you let it dry a little bit, you can add the wing color or the body color back on and touch it up. It's easy, it's easy to fix. So what she's doing is adding a little bit of that dark color in the indentations that we made in the wing. That makes them stand out a little bit more and gives them more definition. It's also an indentation, so it would technically be the darkest part of the bird because it's not directly outward and in the sunlight. So, looks really good. She chose to do hers as Homer Simpson colors. I don't know if you can see that there, but the that's pants. what she's got, the pants and his body. Um, she even wanted to add a little bit of Homer Simpson hair above the eyes, but I, I said, let's wait and do that um, off camera. So, mm -hmm. so you can pick any color theme you want to do, any colors you have, you know, if you've got, all you've got at your house is turquoise and purple, make it a turquoise and purple bird. I think it'll look cute. So that's great. Nice job. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how we're going to thread the string through the bird. The thing with that is if you need to, if your holes are really skinny, you're going to have a hard time threading it through. So, will you see if I'm on screen? Yep, you are. Okay, so as you can see, the holes, we made the holes pretty good. So before you start to paint it, you're going to want to go ahead and slide your, your um, skewer back through those holes real carefully, watching out, be careful not to hit your fingers. That way you're gonna make sure that that hole is really big enough to fit a string through it. Um, same thing with the feet. These holes look really good. I'm gonna slide, oh, I'm gonna slide this one in a little bit. See how it pulled a little bit of that dough out because we don't want that block in our string going through. It'll make it a lot more difficult to put the string through if we have that going on. And I go, I tend to go back and forth both directions, makes it a lot easier. 
Once you feel like you those holes are really good and the nice size, you're gonna take your string. I'm gonna use blue string today because I think it'll look cute with your blue wing, unless you want a different color. That works. Okay. All right, and I'm just gonna cut a piece off about that long. Maybe it's 12 inches or so. Um, and we're gonna do the feet first. So the way I'm gonna do it is I lay the string across the hole and then with the big end, the flat end of my skewer, I'm gonna push that through. Oh, I didn't wanna come all the way through. So I'm gonna use the pointy end and see if I can help it along. And it may take a few times of kind of putting it in front of the hole and, slide, <laughs> and sliding it back through. It'll eventually come out, it's starting to get there. And then I'm gonna try to push a little bit more. There it comes. And then I'm gonna pull that thread through. Now, with the foot, you have to make a knot at the end that will hold that foot onto the string. Because it's such a big hole, I'm gonna have to make probably a double or a triple knot just to make sure that doesn't fall. I cut a 12 inch, 12 inch piece so I had plenty of room to work with the string because I can always cut it down to the length I need once I get it attached to the body. I think I just made that one really bad. Still good though. I thought I made my knot with too much extra string, but I'm good. All right, let's tie it again. I'm gonna double knot it, see if that'll hold. Kind of give it a little tug and see if it slides through. It's starting to a little bit, so I feel like I need to go one more time for a total of three knots on top of each other. So it's like one big giant knot. That should hold it. Yay, that'll hold it. I'm gonna cut off that little tassel now on the end. I'll leave just a little bit there. And now I need to do the same thing with my hole on the body. I'm gonna slide it through. That'd be the left hole by the beak. Yeah, ooh, it doesn't wanna go. There we go, there we go. That one went through better. You wanna do that really gently, really careful because if you're too forceful with it, you might break off a piece of your salt dough which would be sad. Um, if you accidentally do break off a piece of your salt dough, you can use a little bit of Elmer's glue or some craft glue and glue it back on, let it dry for probably 24 hours to make sure it's nice and solid and continue on with it. Now I'm gonna come across the back and I'm gonna push that string through the back side of the other hole, the one that I have not worked with yet. And because that hole is a little bit smaller, I'm gonna try pushing it through with my pointy side, because the pointy side's a little bit more narrow. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah, kind of. Technical difficulties, technical difficulties. It's coming, there it is, yay! Okay, cool. Okay, so now it looks like this. Everybody got it? Cool. All right, now, I'm gonna take this, the other foot, I'm like, what is this thing? And put the string through that one. So I'm gonna do it the same way I did the other one. Hopefully it goes through a little faster for you guys this time. Well, it still wants to take its time. And I'm just kind of pushing more and more thread into that hole using the blunt end of my skewer till I can get it to come through. You may want to get, uh, a parent or older brother or sister to help you with this part. Now your feet can be different lengths or it can be exactly the same, whatever you wanna do. I wouldn't do it too short. I, you know, if they're all the way up here, it's gonna look a little funny and not as much dangly foot thing going on. So I'm gonna lower it down so it's at least close to the same length of the other one. And look and see how much I have. Okay, and then I'm gonna tie my knot. And I'm gonna do the first knot and then check my length and make sure I didn't mess up my length. Let's see. Oh, it's shorter. Okay, so I need to move it up. I mean, it's longer. So I need to move it up. I think I just knotted over the exact same spot again. This bird might have lopsided feet and we'll just do It's gonna have them. <laughs> All right, he's got lopsided feet, but I think it's kind of cute. Okay, 
So we're going to go ahead and leave it like that. I, if you wanted to, you could keep trying to slide this up and knot it up a little bit further up here to get it up to that height. But I am I apparently really want to knot it in that one spot because that's where it keeps hitting. So I am going to let it be. Let it be. Okay. Then I'm going to do it with three knots on top of each other as well and cut off the little piece. And there's my little dangly feet. And now the last thing we need to do is add a piece so that you can, you have something that you could hang it from. And it goes through the two top holes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's gonna work the same way as the two bottom ones. So I'm just gonna go through, I wonder if I could actually push this through without having to use a poker. Let's find out. No, nope, not gonna happen. Okay. So we wanna poke it through the first hole, the one on the left. Maybe. This one makes me nervous because this hole is so close to the top that I'm really nervous that I might actually break some of the salt dough. So I'm taking my time and using the skinnier, pointier end to carefully push it through. It wants to keep popping out. Get in your hole. It's your home. You can do it. It's gonna make it. It's gonna, yeah, there we go, okay. All right, so this time you're gonna string it across the front of the bird, or if you really wanted to, you could string it across the back. I would string it across the front personally because then it's the weight is distributed where it's hanging versus how this one's running across the back. If they're both across the back, I don't know if that's gonna throw it off. You could, I'll try it. Actually, let's just try it. Let's just, let's go for it. So that means I need to, how do I do? Why do I feel like I did that wrong? It means I have to pull it back through, huh? Yep, okay. Trial and error, people, trial and error. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and poke it through the back side of that same hole. I pulled it out and poking it through the back side of that hole. Why do I still feel like I'm doing this wrong? You can tell how many times I've thread these guys. Not that many. Okay, I'm gonna pull that through. Ooh, don't break on me, little bird. Okay, and I'm gonna cut my string because I don't need it attached to the block of string anymore. Now I'm gonna take, so here's what we've got. We've got it coming through the back side on the left hole. We're going to put this side through the back side on the right hole so it comes out the front as well. This hole, of course, is gonna be really small. Am I still on camera? Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> Can you tell we found our sound effects? I guess they weren't really missing that, were they? Okay, there we go. Oops, almost caught it on his beak. So now I'm gonna pull it through. Oh, he hangs perfect. Do it like that, that's much cuter. I like it. Oh, he's so cute. Okay, then this you're just gonna tie in a knot at the top. Whatever length you want him to hang from. And voila, you have a little hanging bird. He's so cute. Fly away, little Homer Simpson. Okay. Now we're going to show you, if you have leftover salt dough, we're gonna show you how to make a salt dough flour. Here is the salt dough flour. We started to paint it, but we'll show you how we're gonna do that in just a second. So I'm gonna set that aside, and I'm going to have my assistant come, and she's going to show you how to do the flour, since she's the one who made that one. So we'll switch places once more. Okay, so you don't really need that one right now, right. so there's like, yeah. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is grab a chunk of your salt dough. How big does it need to be, So, uh, I think it's the size of a large gumball. Yep. A large gumball, so like a jawbreaker. I don't know if you guys know what jawbreakers are. Have you ever seen a jawbreaker, So. I've seen large gumballs. Lar okay, large gumballs, all right. So she's gonna make it about the size of a large gumball. Remember, if it's too dry, spritz it with a little bit of the water. Not too much, because we don't want it to be soggy. And she's gonna roll it around in her hand until she gets it nice and smooth and the size that she wants it to be. Good. 
think about that size. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'll show it in my hand so you can see an adult size hand. Kid Thanks. hand. Okay. All right. So now once you have that, you're going to do kind of like what we did with the bird and you flatten it out into a pancake, correct? Yep, but in your fingertips. Okay. Because you want it to have a little bit of texture to the ends, to the tips. And you go around in a circle, squishing it into a nice little circle. Ish. Circle-ish. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle shape either. We just need to flatten it out so that we can manipulate it into what we want it to look like. Okay, that looks pretty good. Show them the side view of that so you can see how thick that is. That one's a little thick right there, huh? Okay. I'm like, let me show you. Okay. If it starts to crack on the edges, if it's cracking a lot and it feels dry, spritz it with a little water and kind of rub the water into it because we don't want, when you bake it, for it to crumble apart. Okay. This is going to be, we're not going to worry about ours being perfect just for time's sake. Um, okay, so this is going to be the center of your rose. So you want to go ahead and show them how to make it into the center. Yep, you're just going to roll it. You're going to leave it a little bit wider at one end. And then that end you're going to pinch together. It's going to become almost like your little handle. Yep, perfect. Okay, and then you're going to set that aside. And you're going to grab another little chunk of salt dough. I think this one has to be about the same size, doesn't it? Or just a little bit smaller. I don't know that I don't know that we really worried about that. Just um, a gumball, any size of a gumball, medium, small, large, okay. depending on how big you want your petals to be. Okay. So I'm gonna start out with smaller petals first. Okay, that makes sense. Make sure it's not too dry, and then she's gonna do the same thing once she gets it to the size she wants. She's going to squish it with her fingers and make it into a squishy pancake. If it has like rough edges, what I mean by rough edges is not like it's dry and falling apart on the edge, but just they're just rough. They're not perfectly rounded and smooth. That's cool because roses kind of have a little bit of texture to their um, petals and we don't want them to be just perfect, smooth, rounded edges, okay? All right, so once you get that, show them what we do next. And I'll also show what thickness you get it to when you have it where you want it. Um, pretty Down much. a little bit? Okay. Okay. Right. I'm just gonna spray water on my hand because, yeah. That's and that's also, why are we doing that? Um, to adhere a heat or glue. Adhere it to there, yep, yeah. because it, we want it to, it makes it get a little sticky again. And so we want it to stick. So she's taking the first one and just kind of molding it around the base. She is up a little bit from the base. So let me show them really quick. So she did it about halfway up the whole length of it. This part here eventually will be cut off. This is actually just, she's using it as a handle for her to hold on to, but she's squishing and molding it into there. Don't get it too wet. This is getting a little bit too wet, so we need to be careful that we don't go too much more wet in that. Okay, now she's gonna do the same thing again. Grab a chunk of salt dough, make it into a ball, squish it out to the size of a petal she wants. And then she's gonna attach it. Is there enough moisture on the bottom or do you need some? You could also use this water right here um, to dip your fingers in. Instead of a spray bottle, you could dip your fingers in like we did yesterday and just dampen up the side so it sticks to it. And you're just kind of molding it into the side. See how she overlapped those two petals, the one she put on and the next one? They're right next to each other, but she's overlapping. She's also kind of gently squeezing the edges, the tips of the petals to thin them out a little bit and to give them a little bit more of a, a rough texture, like a real rose. Nice, okay. And now you can kind of get where this is going. She's gonna keep going and adding some more petals. So she's grabbing another chunk of salt though, and we'll get it to the size she wants, making sure it's not too dry. And then she will flatten it out with her fingers again. Bring your hands forward a little bit so if you can't do it in your lap, oh. we can't see you. <laughs> Oopsie. It's okay. Let's 
see, she dipped her finger in some water and then she put a little water just a little bit on the edge so that it would again stick to the other dough, molding it across to making sure that it's overlapping the other petals that have been put on, kind of molding it into place. Good, okay. How many petals do you think you'll add, so? Let me see how many is on the other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten! Wow, that's a big rose. I like to make it very open. But I can make this one a little more closed. I get the blooming. Okay. That'd be cool. So I guess it depends on how many, how, how open and how in full bloom or partial bloom you want your rose to be. So the one that she already did is pretty much full bloom. Don't forget to add a little water unless it's already moist. Um, so it sticks. Uh, so she's gonna make this one a little bit more closed so it's just like halfway bloomed. That way also you guys don't get tired of watching her touch petals. <laughs> but it's also pretty if it's only halfway bloomed or open. Yeah, okay, that looks good. Forward. She's also, again, squeezing the tips um, to give them a little bit of a thinned outness so they don't look too chunky and um, can manipulate them in the direction she wants them to go a little bit. Very cute. Nice. I'll just probably add a couple more, then I think that's good. Nice. That's good. This salt dough yeah, makes a lot. Yeah, we've made quite a few things with one batch of salt dough. Um, let's see, two birds and now two roses, and we still have some left. <laughs> I'll make a fish. Yeah, oh yeah. With we'll have to opening. teach them sometime how to do the fish. It's cute too. Yeah. Okay, so she's got her salt dough. She's going to do three more? Yep. Okay, three more petals. Again, making sure that it doesn't get too dry because we don't want it to dry out before it gets um, baked because otherwise if the dough is already too dry it will crumble and fall apart in its baking process but also with that said you don't want it too wet or it becomes a squishy mess you want it just right and while she's doing that i'm gonna i want to reiterate the if you're when you're whoa, trying to put through the um thread or string through your bird and you're using a skewer Please have adult supervision with that so you don't hurt yourself. These do have really pointy ends and it would hurt if that stuck you. It would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Explosion. Okay, it's looking really cute. Um, she found that one was a little too big so she broke off the end of it. Um, to attach it so it's the right height. So if you find that you make one and it's too big, just tear off the bottom of it and, and attach it. What it looks like on the bottom isn't that really big of a deal. We're gonna end up kind of cutting that off anyway so that it will stand. I kind of squished oh, it down. Kind of, oh, mm -hmm. she kind of just squished hers down like and it's that's, standing. That's why I did that one, kind of. Oh. It just formed You never into cut that? them off? Oh. It, it just, just all of a sudden formed into this oh. and I had no idea what So happened. you don't even have to necessarily cut it off. You just keep squishing the bottom and then it becomes this nice little pedestal to sit on. Nice. Yeah. And you get to display it, brag to all your friends about what you made. All fun. You could give it as a Mother's Day gift. Mother Day's, Mother's Day is coming up. Kind of coming up, so not real soon, but you know, it's always good to get it in your head what you're gonna make for mom or grandma. It could be cute little Easter flowers. Oh, I'm or gonna just spring add flowers. One more. You're gonna do one more? Yeah, because there's a part that's bugging me a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze this end a little bit because it feels like it's too thick. I'm gonna squeeze this up a little bit. Curl it in a little. I feel like it needs to curl in a little. Okay. Squeeze you this one. Squeezing the tip too also kind of helps um, make sure that it doesn't have any cracks or crumbliness. Oh, it's cute. Okay. Ta da! It's cute, Miss. Cute, Miss. Love it, love it, love it. Wait, hold on. Yay. 
gorgeous. Show them the bottom of that so they see what the bottom looks like. She never even had to cut off the bottom, so that's even better. Look at that. It just kind of molded itself into a nice little stand to sit on. Perfect. And then we'll bake that at 250 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes and then let it cool for 15 to 20 minutes before we paint it. Make sure if you have, uh, if you decide to make these, you get adult supervision with the baking process as well, please. So now she's gonna show you an alternative way to uh, paint the rose. So we'll go ahead and she's got a little bit of water and okay. she is going to use watercolors yeah. instead of um, acrylic paint. So with watercolors, you, you wanna use water obviously to soften up the watercolor paint, but you don't want to add too much water or it's going to get too saturated in there and your flour will fall apart because it is made out of dough. So um, this is obviously on the baked rose, not the one we just made. That one still needs to be baked before it can be painted. She's decided to go with a pink colored rose, very pretty. She has several different colors of pink watercolor, which is kind of nice because on a rose when it's tight like that in the center it's usually darker in there because it has not unraveled so it's in shadow and then also it hasn't gotten its full capacity of sunlight which tends to lighten the petals as they open anyway so she's going down inside where it's hidden because it's in the shadow and putting the darkest pink in there again don't use too much water you just want it enough water in your watercolors so that the it, it will come off onto your flower, but you don't want it highly saturated as if you were doing a watercolor painting. It will ruin your poor little um, salt dough flower. So she's gonna add a little bit of that in there. Um, show them how to do, uh, like do the lighter color on the center. Okay. And you can come back and do that later. We won't have them watch the whole thing be painted. Yeah. Although oh. it, We'll, t we'll, sh we'll post a picture of it completely painted um, later on Mrs. C's Art Class Facebook page so you can see what it looks like. Um, I think it'll be super cute. You could probably even go as light as this lighter colored pink over here. So, okay. um, One thing she didn't add on the other flower that we demonstrated how to do was put oh, a right, leaf. The leaf. So there's a leaf right here. She just took a chunk of salt um, dough and made a circle again, flattened it out, and then kind of shaped it into a teardrop shape. She used the skewer like we did yesterday to push into it, using the side of it to push into it, to stamp it, to give it the line down the center, and then the lines coming off to the sides that point upward and outward a little bit. So it looks more like a leaf. Then she attached it to the bottom of the rose using just a little bit of water as, um, like her adhesive, so, so to speak, to, to, soften, to soften the dough so it would stick. And that she put on before she and I baked it. The watercolor goes on a lot lighter, but I think it looks really pretty and um, I, I wanted her to try it with this um, because it's not such a thick, dark consistency like the acrylic that I think it looks really pretty and more realistic as far as a rose goes because um, roses have a lot of variation in the color in their petals. And so I really like how this shows that versus being a solid uh, opaque color like the acrylic. It gives it a little bit of more um, transparency to it so that you can see more detail of the leaf, or the, not the leaves, the petals, and you'll also see more detail in the leaf. So that looks really pretty. I like it, nice job. She's gonna continue working on this off screen. We will post a picture of it when it is all done. I hope this helped you guys. Um, I hope you guys are staying busy, doing lots of art while you're home. And join us again tomorrow at three for another fun project. We will post tomorrow morning what supplies you need for tomorrow's class. So we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.